welcome back to my channel. Where I've been, I do not know, to be honest, just not sat in front of a camera. I just took a little bit of a break, a life break. To not break from life, break from this to do life. I don't know. It's going to be a little bit difficult for me to talk to the camera today because I'm totally not used to it anymore. It's just been, <laughs> it's been a long time. There's no particular reason. I just got a little bit busy and didn't really have motivation to to film. It just kind of, I don't know, I just found other things to do. But I'm back. I really love filming and I want to get back into it and I'm just, I'm back. So today I'm just going to go through a few of my favourite things, things that have just, I've come across some things that I've been using and loving over the past few months that I have disappeared off the face of the planet for you guys. So I'm going to start with talking about these glasses. So these are prescription sunglasses that look a little bit dirty actually. The constant battle with wearing glasses is just the lens getting dirty all the time. I clean them, I stick them on my face, I swear to god I don't touch them but they end up with fingerprint marks and stuff all over them. Anyway, I finally decided to invest, I'm poking my eye, in a pair of prescription sunglasses and I just thought it would be a really good idea to be able to protect my eyes from the sun and from the brightness of the sun and also be able to see in focus. I just thought that might be a really good idea. So we've not actually had a huge, huge, huge amount of sunny days this year yet but I think there's going to be one tomorrow. There is a sunny day today, to be honest, but you know, they're handy for wearing in the car, definitely, but I've not really had a full, full day out in them yet. They've been handy if you're going on my runs and things, but these ones, I think I've got two pairs, but these ones, I feel like they're a little bit loose, so sometimes they, I don't know, they slip quite easily, but there we go. I might just get them a little bit tightened in or something. So I bought these from Glasses Direct and it's like an on online glasses site. You can actually, which is really, really helpful because when you buy glasses online, it's obviously going to be a little bit of a risk because you don't really know what you're buying. You can actually test the frames. They can send you them for free and you can test them and then send them back and then decide whether you actually want to purchase the lens. But I just decided to go for it and take the risk. And both of the glasses that turned up were actually really, really nice. And I got some normal ones as well. There we go, there's a pair of my normal ones. <laughs> the really silly thing is I thought, I thought I'd ordered some where, I don't know, when you're filming they wouldn't have this reflecting thing going on, but apparently I didn't, they probably would have cost a fortune, but I don't know, they've got anti-glare some sort of something so that when I'm driving the lights don't like, I don't know, affect me as much, but they, you can still see reflection in pictures and cameras, I didn't know that would be the case, but anyway, I'm really glad I bought them from Glasses Direct instead of Specsavers because they were so, so much cheaper. I basically was encouraged to buy them through the Martin Lewis email again. Whether he's encouraging me to spend money or whether he's encouraging me to save money, I'm not so sure. No, I did need new glasses. I went to get a new, um, I went to get a new prescription because yeah, yeah, I had an eyesight test so I needed a new prescription. I think they were a little bit worse than they used to be. I was getting really bad headaches and I went to get my eyes tested and since getting new glasses I don't get headaches anymore so well, I get like the odd few but I was going home every single day after work with a massive headache half the day in I'd just be suffering um quite a lot so it's definitely helped so if you're getting headaches go get your eyes tested it might be that it might not but you know I'm not a doctor next thing I've really really been loving is I bought this only really a couple of weeks ago Burt's Bees it's a very random make that I'd never to be honest I don't think I'd even heard of it I think I saw some celebrity, mm, what's her name, Christina Hendricks, I saw her on her Instagram advertising this, just saying that she wears this and her lips look nice and it doesn't give me Christina Hendricks lips but you know, it's just basically a little bit of colour and it's just balm because I don't really do already had some on anyway but you know I don't really do lipsticks that often so I really really like this because it's just a tinted lip balm so it just gives you that little bit of colour but loads and loads of moisture and I paid about three pound something from Amazon for it so it was really really cheap as well let me just tell you it's shade rose so it's called Burt's Bees tinted lip balm in rose and it's 100% natural as well natural goodness in there bunch of leaves the next thing I've been loving 
for glorious summer evenings that we haven't really been having is this. It does look like I've quite enjoyed it actually, doesn't it? Because there's not a huge amount left. Copperberg came out with a gin, which is amazing. I've never really, I've never bought gin in my life, but then when this came out, I was like, I need to get this because I buy a lot of Copperberg in my life. And it's the strawberry and lime one, and it's obviously much stronger than what I'm used to drinking when I just drink the Copperbergs, the Copperberg ciders, the fruity, fruity cider things that just literally taste like fruit juice. But that was the idea with this. I thought, brilliant. So I just mix like the tiniest amount of this with some lemonade. I swear to God, this wasn't me who drank all this. Two friends came over and they wanted way more in the glass than I have. And that's that's who downed it, not me. Just, you know. <laughs> no, it's, it's just been over time really, but I have had, I, I do pour the tiniest amount in really. I just kind of like, it's like when I make squash or something. When I make squash, I make it so weak. I make it like, just like a touch, just, just to make it like flavoured water, whereas most people fill half the glass up with Ribena and stuff, but I do not, I don't know why, I just don't like it too strong. But also, I get drunk very, very easily, so when it comes to alcohol, I just have the tiniest bit and lemonade, and it takes the whole night for me to finish a glass, like hours and hours for me to finish one glass. So I'm not really a big drinker, but this is just a beautiful thing that's come out in summer. There's so many different gins around at the moment. I've just purchased one from Aldi that's a blueberry and blueberry and vanilla flavour. I haven't tried it yet. I smelled it the other day. I took the lid off and took, took a smell of it. And it smells a bit like acid. Chemicals. I don't know what that acid smells. It smells a bit like chemicals. It just smells really, really chemically. Like I could do the clean the bathroom with it or something, but I hope it doesn't taste like that. So Jim was laughing at me because he was said, don't, don't smell it, don't smell spirits. They probably don't smell as nice as they, they taste. But anyway, um, yeah, this is one I can definitely recommend. I'll let you know how I get on the Aldi one, but this definitely recommend if you enjoy that kind of fruity flavor, this is beautiful. Another thing I purchased recently has been this run belt. I used to use another run belt, which I may or may not have mentioned in one of my videos last year when I first started running. But the kind of elastic kind of started just going on it a little bit and something's happened to it where I used to wear it quite low, I used to wear it around my hip and then suddenly when I was running it was like sliding upwards and it was really irritating. So then I started wearing it around ooh, just under my bra area, like literally around this bit. But the problem was it was restricting me from breathing properly whilst running, so it really didn't help. So I thought, right, I've got to do something. I've got to buy something different. And I went for this one from Amazon. I'll try and put a link in the description box below if I can find it, um, the right one that I use. It has one of these little holes in it there where you can put your, put your headphone wire through. To be honest, I use Bluetooth ones anyway, so it doesn't really apply to me. It doesn't don't really need it. I just literally need someone to put my phone and house key if I'm going out on my own and um, yeah it stays in place it stays around my waist waist hips hips which is what I want um, and it doesn't restrict my breathing and I don't have to fiddle with it it's yeah it's really good how long it'll last I don't know but it was only cheap anyway so if I have to buy another one in a few months so be it but this one definitely recommend something else another reason why I've kind of disappeared off the face of the earth recently on YouTube is because I've been really busy getting into exercise so apart from running um well to be fair I had to kind of stop running for a while because my hip started hurting I don't know whether I mentioned this on here either but my hip started hurting back in January after I ran it would really really hurt and I'd be like an old lady trying to get out of the car um, I didn't know what was going on but I thought okay I'll just take a little while off running and see how I get on and it didn't get any better and then every time I went for a run I just made it worse and yeah I didn't know what to do and I laughed it months I've laughed it months and months and then I finally decided to go to the doctor a couple of weeks ago he gave me some tablets I think he said it was some kind of ligament thing he didn't think it was to do with my actual hip bone or anything um, he thought it was like a ligament thing so he gave me some tablets and I think it was some sort of an anti-inflammatory kind of thing. He said take these for, he said take them for a week and if it goes away stop, if not keep taking them up until four weeks and then if nothing's happened come back. I did also have to take another tablet because it caused acid in the stomach, 
if you took these tablets. I hate that. You take one thing and then they have to like give you another one because they get side effects from that. That's kind of why I put off doctors for so long because I'm not really into, just not really into taking pills and going to the doctors and actually thinking they can do anything to help me. I don't know why I just decided, no, it'll be fine. It'll go on its own, but it did not go on its own. Surprisingly, I took these tablets for a week, one single week and it stopped. It's completely gone. It hurts a tiny bit after a run at the moment and Jim keeps shouting at me because he says take them again but it's nothing like, like, I'll know when it comes back properly. Basically the doctor said if it does work after a week you can stop taking them and just take them as and when so if it does start happening again just take them again. I don't, I kind of said to him like why is it not just healed on its own but so it's probably just because it needed a proper rest or it needed it needed treatment basically, it couldn't just heal on its own and I just didn't understand why, I was just like why can't it just get better on its own? Anyway, lesson is learnt, go to the doctors if something is wrong and yeah, so I went and took the tablets and it's gone and so I can run again and I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, I've been back at running but the point in me explaining why I run getting off running is because I because I couldn't run much I was stressing out thinking okay I don't want to lose the fact that I've gotten a little bit more fitter I don't want to lose this by stopping running so I joined a CrossFit program thing it's six o'clock in the morning three mornings a week and I've been doing it for about I've been doing it I've been doing the proper three mornings a week for about four weeks now but I also did like a beginner's course for four weeks and that was two evenings a week and they were just teaching you the basics because I've never, I've never done weightlifting. I've never done, you know, I've been to the gym and my friend was showing me how to use the weights last year, but I really haven't done actually lifting up free weights and bars and doing deadlifts and squat jerks and all this stuff that was just going over my head because I was just like, what is this? I've never done it. I really don't have strength, strength. So. I want strength and that's what I'm working on at the moment. So yeah, the, the fact that I stopped running obviously spurred me on to just do this, but I also have been wanting to do that anyway. And another thing was I thought maybe my hips, I don't know, somebody said to me, maybe your hips hurting because you're not, your core's not strong enough and you're just going for a run, but you don't actually have the muscle strength to deal with it. Anyway, so yeah, I joined and I'm so happy I did. It's amazing. It's so tough to get in the, up in the morning sometimes, but I'm just doing it. I've not missed a session yet. I feel like if I miss a session, that's it. And I'll just have an excuse every morning and just be like, no, don't fancy it today. Don't fancy it today. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to get my money's worth and do every single session in unless there's something major where I really can't go. I've almost backed out a couple of mornings this past week, but I've done it. And yeah, I, I'm not Am I going to show you myself? <laughs> Apparently I am. Um, I'm definitely getting stronger and I feel fitter and yeah, it definitely feels better. And I went for a run the other day on Sunday and today is Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I went on Sunday and I did 10k and I am so amazed with myself. It's ridiculous. I just... I, when I came home, because I've done, I did an 8k the other week and it's only the second, yeah, the second 8k I've ever done. Usually I just run 5k's and I did 8k and I was amazed at myself because I can do it again because I, last time I did it was back in like February or something and then I had some time off. So I did 8k, which amazed me. And then I went out the other day and then came back home and Jim, Jim said, oh, did, did you do 8k again? You know? And I almost started crying because I'd done 10k. It was just kind of the emotion and the fact I'd pushed myself so hard and I couldn't believe that I was saying it. I kind of started crying little little tears um, and told them that I did 10k and I was just so proud of myself. So I've entered a 10k race in October. So I've got a few months to kind of prepare for that as well. But the fact I know I can do it now is just brilliant. I thought I was going to have to enter the 10k and then not quite have actually done it on my own before but now I have so I'm like super excited so yeah so I've done that which is amazing that's kind of why I think my mind my mind and my life has just been really consumed with making sure I can get up and do these CrossFit sessions and actually be there and show up and put the effort in and yeah it just kind of it just made me really really tired as well in the evenings and things there's one day in the week where I have off and I still have to get up at the six o'clock to, to do the workout and it's just like oh I just want to lay in sometimes but to be fair, when it is my day off and I do get a lay in, I don't do it because I'm thinking I don't want to waste the day. Anyway, that's my little talk about CrossFit and about my running. There's another favourite coming up. Jesus. 
My arm is full. Good to bring up muscles to catch it. My next favourite is something that Jim decided to buy from Amazon the other day. This is a giant chopping board. It's not that big. It's quite big. It's quite big. It's the biggest one we've ever had. Basically, we used to use quite small, cheap, really thin chopping boards and we never had space enough to chop things and it was just a bit of a pain. And we've gotten into watching a lot of cooking things recently. We used to watch Gordon Ramsay stuff all the time and we really, really love cooking shows and his stuff is amazing. But Jim was watching something on his own and he saw them talking about a chopping board saying, I don't know, you need a good chopping board or something. And Jim just decided, why don't, why don't we have a really good chopping board? Jim, to be fair, does most of the cooking, but I don't, so I don't know why this isn't my favourite video, but you know, I chopped some stuff on it, up on it the other day to put on top of a pizza and yeah, this, this was really handy, so I really liked it. If I can find the link for this, I will put that in the description as well. I think it was about £10, I think he said, yeah. Just a decent chopping board, you can pretty much get these from anywhere anyway, but it's just a little, if you don't already have one, get one really helpful. I don't know why we didn't think of getting one sooner. Only other thing I've got to talk about is a podcast I've been listening to and it's Fern Cotton's Happy Place and it's just a podcast where she interviews people, all sorts of different kinds of people, about their mental health, about their well-being, about just about their careers and, and all that kind of thing as well but mainly how they, mainly about the mind really and just how they cope with different things and it's just yeah it's really insightful and really helpful to just listen to to and she well the fact she's actually talking about this kind of thing and putting it out there and helping people by just discussing these topics is brilliant she's actually got a happy place festival going on there's one going on down in london in august time maybe and then there's one in tatton park up in cheshire area and that is taking place in September. And me and my friend are going to go because it just sounded brilliant. It's a proper, like chilled out kind of festival where they're talking about mental health and doing yoga and they've got people doing talks and little activities and things. We're literally just going to go and really enjoy the day. And yeah, we might vlog it as well. I think, I think we probably will vlog it. So I'll see, yeah, hopefully I'll be putting that up in September sometime. So look forward to that. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up now. Hopefully that wasn't too rushed and too kind of sketchy because I'm not used to this anymore. But you know, when have I ever been good at this? It's just, it's just, it's just there, isn't it, for you to watch if you enjoy it. Anyway, thank you very much. And hopefully I'll be back uploading a little bit more regularly now. I shall see you very soon. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> I never know how to say goodbye.